Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. We have a saying here at the Wayward Outreach that once you watch once, you're now part of the family. We know that God is ready to do something amazing in your life, so check out today's service. Hello everyone, so glad you're tuning in tonight. We have Derek Faison with us, and all the way now, he was from Texas, now he's from Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, and, and he's actually pastor in a church. You were assistant pastor for T.D. Jakes for years. And now God has blessed you with your own church to lead. How long have you been leading that church now? For a year now. For a year. Oh, I'm talking about <laughs> for a year now. For a year Senior now. Pastor for a year now. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, so, you know, he has even one of his associates here that's kind of yeah, walking through our building and, and just checking out what we're doing here as a church. And Amen. we're so glad that you're back. We are ready to hear from God. You know, we're living in a time that we need to hear from God more than ever. You know, when God wanted to change the world, this is what he did. He sent his word. That's how he changed the world. And, and Paul in the Bible says, for me to live is Christ. For me to die is gain. But he was saying, as long as I'm here, there's going to be one message yeah. that's going to be coming out of my mouth. Yeah. It, I'm going to be talking about Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, we as a church need to realize this. We have so many issues going on today, and we could be here talking about every single issue till kingdom come. Yeah. But there's only one message that can change someone's heart for eternity. Yeah. And the message that we preach is the good news That's of the, Jesus Christ. That's the message. And Jesus says, go out there and preach the gospel yeah. to the whole world. Yeah. You know, one of our mission, our vision statements says, this is our vision statement. It says, yeah. bring in salvation to the inner cities of the world. Wow. And it says, through preaching the gospel. Amen. So we already know that what's going to change our world, yeah. what's going to cause people's hearts to, to be transformed yeah. is one message, yes. and it's the message of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Can we give the Lord a hand? That we can, come on, we got a message. Got a message. We got to know what our message is, you know, yes. and, and now we're bringing, we're coming together, and there's so many subjects that we could talk about, but... This is the one assignment that God has given us. Amen. He gave prophets an assignment. Jesus said this, that he only did what he saw the Father do, yeah. and he only said what he heard the Father say. Yes. And what he was saying, everything that I'm saying doesn't come from anywhere but from the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. The word of God is our source, mm -hmm. and we got to make sure that that's what we are preaching in these last days. Yes. Understand, the one message that has, a, has the power to change our nation, our cities, our families, there's one message that can change our eternal destination, and it's the good news of Jesus Christ. Let's give the Lord one more hand that we got a message to preach. Yes. Yes. You know, and, and what God has been doing, he's been, you know, we've been doing Wednesday nights and then, Friday, Friday nights, and he's preparing us, I really believe, for the bringing in the greatest harvest that we've ever seen. Amen. And you know when a harvest is ready to happen, you know, is oh, yeah. when, when you're ready to get a breakthrough. Yeah. I, this is how you know, when all hell's breaking loose. Uh, That's when you know, like, wait a second, yeah. it looks so bad. And then Jesus says, okay, why don't you just look around? Can't you see the harvest is ripe? Yeah. What he was saying, take your eyes and put it in the spiritual realm. Right. Take your eyes off the problems, right. the situations, right. off COVID, and put your eyes back on me, what I'm saying, the harvest is ripe. Yes. We're getting ready. There's so much pain. Yeah. People are suicidal. Yeah. We're depressed. We're more, the families are being divided. Yeah. Churches are being divided. People are struggling. And there's only one message that could fix all that. Come on. One message, one person, and one name we call on, and that's the name of Jesus Christ. So, so I'm glad you are here. Tell us about what's going on in your life a little bit. Man, well, I'm so excited. God has blessed us to take over work in Nashville, Tennessee, and the Lord has been blessing us even during this COVID crisis. Right to still reach out and minister to the needs of our community, to wrap right. our arms around the community. Because like you said, our communities are hurting, our families are hurting. And just because they put mandates on the church being shut down, the ministry's not shut down. Right. So I think it's strategic that God has sent us there 
right before all this happened. Right. So we can navigate through all this and get right. to the message of Jesus Christ and that he still saves and he still delivers. And I'm, so I'm happy to have the opportunity to be at the helm of that great ministry. And I brought my, my COO, Mr. David Green. He's here and he's a great man of God and he's full yeah, of vision is. and full of passion and I love full him. of compassion. And I'm just mm -hmm. glad that he's taking this trip with me. I brag about you guys all the time. I yeah. brag about you all over the world because I think that you guys have the message. Right that the world needs. I'm just glad to be, I'm glad to be home, y'all. I'm back in the yeah, San right. This is, this is when I come here, I'm home. <laughs> you are, you are. And, and our message is simple. Yeah. Jesus is the answer. Jesus Amen. is the way, the truth, and the life. That's why it's called, it's called the way world outreach. Jesus is. is the way out. Jesus is the way over. Jesus is the way through. Yeah. He's the way. Yeah. He's the way to heaven. He's the way to restoration. Yeah. He's the way to healing. He's the way to joy. He's the way to peace. He's the way to success. He's the way to wisdom. He's the He's way. He's the way. He's the way. Yeah. You know, and the other thing that's a major driving force of what we do is love. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and we realize that, you know, I know you're going to read a scripture today because I, we were, I was looking at your notes and, mm -hmm. and th that God says he'll do above and beyond whatever we could ask or yeah, think absolutely. according to the power that's working within us. Absolutely. I love that scripture. It's one of my favorite scriptures. Absolutely. And that power that's working with us, within us, is the power of God's spirit mm -hmm. or manifested or defined is love. Yeah. The more love yeah. we walk in, the more unlimited results we can get. Yeah. That's the power that's above and beyond yeah. through that power of love that's working. And I really believe there's an assault on love. You know, and, and, yeah. I, and I, there's an assault. The enemy doesn't want us united. Yeah. He wants us divided, whether Absolutely. it's politics or or it's the socialists that we're dealing today. Absolutely. You know, it, it, he wants us divided. Because the only way he could conquer us is to divide us. Yeah. He yeah. can't conquer us if we're united. Not, united, no. Not together. Yeah. Because wherever two or three are gathered, he is there. Yeah. If we agree, yeah. whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So yes. we got power when we're united, and we have no power when we're divided. Yeah. So I really believe that's what's happening right now. Yeah. And yes, the, like you said, the church has been shut down, but not, it hasn't been. Because God is, you know what he's also doing? Yeah. It's getting us to break away from our religious mindset. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. it's just systems of how we've been doing Absolutely. it. He goes, you've been depending more on systems Absolutely. than my spirit. Absolutely. So I, you know what's happening yes. now? God's saying, come on, you're going to have to depend on my yes. spirit now. Yes, yes, yes. Get yes. fresh revelation, yes, yes, fresh yes. ideas. Yes, yes, yes. Because yes. I'm doing, can't you see I'm doing a yeah, new yeah, thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so many people are complaining about, oh my God, we can't wait till COVID's <laughs> over. And they're missing the revelation of what God's doing in this moment. It's an opportunity. Right? It's an opportunity. You know, so, you know, so I'm excited that you're here. And, and Friday night, we're going to have a powerful Friday night. You do not want to miss. Can't wait. I mean, Friday nights have been like heaven on earth. And wow. what I've described it as is as, as like a, a kingdom bubble. Wow. Like we enter in and it's a whole different atmosphere. Wow. Like people are forgetting about COVID. They're forgetting about their fears. They're forgetting about, I mean, we're forgetting about everything but Jesus Christ. Wow. It's just a united, wow. it, it's like there are no issues. Wow. It's like we're visiting heaven. And yeah. that's what's happening on Friday nights. We're, yeah. we're just seeing a great move of God. Yeah. Uh, to describe it, it's, it's, it's like impartation. You've come in impartation. Yes, but, you know, really on, I, on steroids, I know you shouldn't be taking steroids, but it's something like that. Right? <laughs> I know you're working out right now. You're not taking steroids, are you? No, no steroids. Okay, good. No All steroids. Right. I just want to make sure I didn't offend you in the middle of the sermon. <laughs> love you, man. Love you, love you, love you. So... Let's give, let's give Derek Faze all the way from now Tennessee, not Texas. Let's give him a way world outreach welcome in your home. Let's hear what God is speaking to us. Part one, part two is going to be Friday. Love you. While you're standing, why don't you give God your best praise right there? Come on, if you love the Lord and you're not ashamed, raise the roof in this house. If you're watching me online, I want you to take a moment and give God your best praise right where you are. Come on, wake up some neighbors, make some noise. Let somebody know that Jesus is in the house. How many know that Jesus is in the house? I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here, but I'm glad Jesus is here. Come on, if you're glad Jesus is here, give him your best praise right here. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm so glad to be here with you on tonight. Please be seated. I'm so glad to be here with you on tonight. I know this is not your normal format for your Wednesday night, but I just come to interrupt your regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> 
to bring you a special announcement, a special word from God. And I have to be honest with you. I feel like a mailman tonight. Uh, the, the Lord drug, snatched me all the way out of Nashville, Tennessee, in the middle of all these things that we're doing so I could deliver this message for you. And I'll be honest with you. I don't know who it's for or who I'm speaking to. I'm just a mailman. I'm, I'm, I haven't looked inside your mail. I'm just going to deliver what God said to deliver, and I'm going to go home. Is that all right? Amen. Whoever is for this, grab what you need and thank God for it. Amen. 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 So thank you for letting me come out and be a part of this and be a part of this great. Would you help me to welcome to to welcome my friend, Mr. David Green? He's the COO of the Victory Church of Nashville. He flew all the way out here with me. I said, man, you got to go with me to this great church, this great ministry. Pastor Marco and Pastor Robert, their wives, their team, man, is just amazing. And I just want you to be around these great people. Amen. Amen. So if you would indulge me tonight, if you would turn with me in your Bibles to the Gospel of St. John, chapter 21, verse 25. I'm going to read one verse there. I'm going to be giving you some others, but I want to mainly focus on this one verse here on tonight. So it's going to be kind of teachy preachy. So I may walk the floor some. Uh, I'm going to save the hooping for Friday night. They, they, said me, they tell me Friday night fire is the bomb. So I'm, so, <laughs> look, I'm a try to, Pastor Robert, because you know how I do. I'm a try to. But since you're in format for Wednesday night and normally, normally teachy, preachy, we're going to shift gears and talk to you tonight. And uh, hopefully in the midst of our talk, our conversation, that God would deposit something in you that's going to absolutely change your life. I'm one of those weird preachers. I, I don't believe that God shoots blanks. I think that every word from God is powerful, that is impactful, and that when God speaks through the man of God, he is shooting something at a target and God doesn't miss. You hear what I say? God doesn't miss. So uh, I'm going to share with you what the Spirit said to me, all right? The Gospel of St. John, chapter 21, verse 25, and it says this. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Yeah, even the world itself could not contain, can't hold it, can't control it, the books that should be written. And I want to use a simple subject God said to whisper to you, thinking outside your box. That's what he wants to talk to you about. He wants to talk to you about thinking outside your box. Now, I want to warn you, anytime God starts talking to you uh, and challenging you in your thinking, uh, it's a sign. It's a sign that God's about to release something in your life. And before he releases it in your life, he sets you free in your head. That before it manifests in your natural, it becomes true in your spiritual. And so before God begins to drop something on your, in your life, in your hands, he gets your head ready for it. So somebody lift your hands up and say, I'm getting ready for it. I'm here ready. Lord, get, he's going to pull me out of it head first. Lord, bless your word tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. The Gospel of St. John ends with this interesting phrase that, that, that really captures my attention. First of all, he says that there were many things that Jesus did that weren't even recorded. That, that's interesting to me. Because as we follow Jesus' life, to be quite honest, there's not a lot written about his life. There's a lot of details missing about his life. For example, from his birth to age 12, you don't read a whole lot in there. You, you, at age 12, you see him astounding the doctors, and then he kind of goes into obscurity, and then he comes back out again at about age 30. And between those ages, between birth and 12 and 12 to 30, you don't, you don't read a whole lot about the details of his life. And then when we do talk about Jesus' life, what we read in the Gospels are the last three years of his life, in particular the last few weeks of his life. 
right? So he's giving us uh, information surrounding those last few moments before his crucifixion, but the details are missing. And then in that short time, we read Jesus doing miracles. He's, he's opening blinded eyes. He's healing the sick. He's raising the dead. His, his ministry was impactful. His ministry had uh, influence. His ministry was astounding. There were dead people being raised by his ministry. There, there were thousands being fed by his ministry. There, there were people being set free. Demonic, oppressed people were being set free. That blinded eyes, Jesus was opening. It, it, was, a it was a sign that he was the Messiah, the various things that he did. And, and all these great things that we accumulate, that we find from reading the Gospels and we're fascinated with all the miracles and the, and the prophetic words and the deliverances and walking on water Jesus was doing. Ah, feeding 5,000 with, with five loaves and two fish. Uh, uh, raising Lazarus from the dead. Oh, wow. Causing lame men to walk and people blind from birth. He was opening their eyes and opening the ears of the deaf. And yet, with all of that information, John infers there was more. That with all the stuff that we had and all the things that we read in the Gospels, that, that John infers that many more things he did, we just didn't record it. That there were many things that he did that, that we were so busy uh, uh, experiencing the moment that we did not even write it down. That John testifies in chapter 21 and says, I'm not trying to give you an exhaustive uh, account of everything Jesus did. I was just giving you fragments, pieces, parts, just enough to make you believe. That I didn't have to include everything he did. I just pulled out highlights and points that he did throughout his ministry and his life. And through the fragments, the pieces, the parts that I gave you, it was just enough to change your life forever. That he says this, that basically I don't have to have the whole loaf. I can just give you a slice. And from the slice, I know that the bread is good. So what we have in the Gospels is not the whole loaf. It's not everything Jesus did. He, the Gospels is just giving us slivers, slices, fragments, crumbs, if you please. <laughs> and from those crumbs that I give you of his life and his ministry, it's enough to change your life forever. The power is in the crumbs. Well, I hear somebody say, well, well pastor, what good are crumbs? Well, well, one Gentile woman came to Jesus who needed God to do a miracle in her daughter, in his daughter, in her daughter's life. And, and Jesus said, well, I, 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 I came to rescue or to speak to the lost sheep of Israel. I'm not supposed to be talking to you. You're a Gentile woman. In fact, he goes on to say, I can't, I'm not supposed to give the bread to the dogs. This bread is for the children. That's what they call Gentiles. They, they consider them dogs. I'm supposed to give the bread, the best portion, to the children. I can't give it to the dogs. And she said, yeah, but even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. Even the dogs grab the crumbs that fall off the table. And Jesus was so impressed with her faith that her daughter was healed in that very hour, she didn't have to have the whole loaf. All she needed was a crumb. I'm telling somebody tonight that all you need is a word from God. You don't have to have a degree in theology. You don't need to know about eschatology or pneumology. All you need is a word from God. One word from God will break an addiction in your life. You, you're not going to get happy about that. One word from God will let you set you free out of the prison in your mind. One word from God will change everything about your life. I wonder if there's anybody in here who knows that one word from God, one message at the right time, got broke my addiction, got me out of alcohol, got me off a drug addiction, set me free. If one word changed your life, give God a shout right here. I don't have no degree in theology. I don't have no THD or PhD, but I got a word from God and it changed my life. Somebody give God a praise for a word from God. Just a word, just a word, just a word. I'm getting happy off of a crumb. 
Ain't that something? A crumb set me free from prison. A crumb snatched the needle out my arm. A crumb broke a sexual addiction. A crumb broke a spirit of poverty. Oh my God. A crumb got me out of witchcraft. Ooh. A crumb helped me break my allegiance to gang activity. A crumb, just one word from God. But, but that's not even what I'm talking about tonight. That was just a side order. Yeah. yeah. But what really intrigued me was what, was what he said, uh, that if we were to try to accumulate everything that he did, I told you I left out pieces. I just gave you crumbs. But if you tried to take everything that Jesus did and accumulate it all together, that the world couldn't contain everything that he did. That's profound. But what bothered me, Pastor Marco, was the word contain. That's where my mind fell. Con contain. What does it mean to contain something? When you contain something, that means you put it within limits. You make it manageable. You make it controllable. You, to, to, when you contain something, that means you put it in a box. Y'all got, got container stores around here, don't you? You know, at the container store, they have various size containers for almost everything that you need. You know, big, small, little. You put things in these containers, and when you put them in containers, that means that you can make them manageable. You can weigh them. You can put limits on them. You can put boundaries on them. You, you can weigh them. You can measure them. You can, you, can, you can figure out how much volume they have because I put it in a container. And when I put it in a container, I can manage it. I can put it in a certain place. And God says, you can't contain me. You, you, there's no way, there's no box that you can create because I can't be measured. You, you can't measure me. You can't weigh me. I'm, I'm, I'm so wide, you can't get around me. I'm so high, you can't get over me. I'm so low, you can't get under me. I'm too big, I'm too strong, I'm too wide. There's nothing that you can use to measure how great I am. <laughs> There's no scale that you can build that can measure the weight of my glory. There's no telescope that you can find that would go beyond my existence. There's nothing that you can use to contain me and put me into a box. Solomon found this out. When he built the great temple in the Old Testament that they call Solomon's temple, he built this great elaborate ornate place of worship and people from all over the world came to see this great place of worship that he built dedicated to his God. And Solomon stood up and looked at it and said, Lord, the heaven of heavens can't contain you. That's what Solomon, after all this, all this wealth and after you built this great big building, after you built this great big elaborate place of worship, he stood back and looked at it and said, God, even this is not big enough to hold you. The heavens of heavens is not big enough for you, much less this house that I built. So, I want to say to somebody tonight that God cannot be contained. He can't be contained. He can't be explained that God has to be experienced. He's bigger than your box. What do I mean by your box? He's bigger than your concept of who he is. He's bigger than your definition of who God is. I'm going to go deep tonight so you might as well follow me. He's bigger than your mindset. He's bigger than your religion. I'm going to go deep now. He's bigger than your organization. He's bigger than your church. He's bigger than your political affiliation. He's bigger than your cultural background. He's bigger than your hood, your block, your neighborhood. That every time you try to stick God in a box, God said, I don't fit in here. I'm going to always spill out. I'm going to always spill over. 
Oh my God. You trying to say that God is with my block, my hood, my organization, my affiliation. God said, get off of me. You can't hold me in this box. I'm too big. I'm too big, I'm too strong, I'm too wide, I'm too long. I won't fit into your concept of who I am. And I'm not going to shrink myself down to your noble, your small concept of me. You're going to have to make your mind bigger. Somebody shout bigger. That's why I'm talking to you tonight, because God said, I'm not going to shrink myself down. I'm going to stretch your mind. I'm going to stretch your imagination. I'm going to open your spirit. I'm going to make your mind be able to receive what I'm about to send on to you. Lift your hands and say, God, I'll receive it. Anytime you try to put God in a box, God said, I'm going to break out. You can't put me in a corner. You can't relegate me to one area of the city. If my spirit breaks out in one area, it's going to spill over to everybody's community. Yeah, he's not a black God. He's not a white God. He's not a Republican God. He's not a Democratic God. He's not a rich God. He's not a poor God. He's just God. And you can't hold me. God said, I'm too vast. I'm too big. I'm too imaginative. I'm too creative. How dare you try to confine me to some manageable piece of equipment when my creativity made the whole world. That's why I don't understand people that try to manage God. How are you going to manage God? He's the creator of the universe. He made the universe, the worlds, the sea, the fish, the fowl of the air. You're trying to relegate him down to a program. God said, I'm ripping up the program because it don't fit me. Don't fit. It don't fit. It don't fit. You're trying to choose who I drop my spirit on, but I can't fall on who you want. I'm falling on everybody. Anybody that wants my spirit, anybody that wants my presence, I'm going to show up. God said to tell somebody, you're confining me with your mindset. You're confining me with your intellect. You're confining me with your degree. You think I can't show you more than your degree? I can show you things you've never seen. That's why you got to be humble because God is so awesome that the things you brag about now, God said those things will be stupid later. Oh, be humble. I'm glad that God has blessed you and has success. But please understand that, have you ever done this? Have you ever looked at an old high school picture? The, the senior prom. And you was all decked out and you just knew you was clean. Couldn't nobody tell you you wasn't clean. You look at that picture 20 years later and think, what in the world was I thinking? <laughs> At the time, you thought you was Jody Sharp, right? I'm clean from head to toe. You, it was so clean, you took a picture of it. <laughs> and then you look back 20 years later, and you're thinking, what was I thinking? Why was I wearing that? Oh, my God, bell bottoms, what? <laughs> because we got to be humble to realize that some of the things that we think are great today in a few years, you're going to think it was stupid because God is progressive. Because God said, whatever you're doing now, I'm prepared to exceed that. <laughs> whatever you're into now, that's why you got to be flexible. That's why you got to be innovative. That's why you got to be open to what God is doing. Because whatever he's doing now, I'm about to exceed that. I'm not the God of yesterday. I'm the God of today and tomorrow. That whatever you're seeing today, I'm going to exceed that. Sometimes God is, just, God is the only one who can one-up himself. <laughs> God said, I don't run out of tricks. That whatever you saw me do yesterday, I can exceed that. So the Bible says in Ephesians, unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Now, I'm imaginative when I preach, and, and I can imagine when Paul was writing the scriptures, he was trying to find words to explain how big God is. Yeah, I'm trying to find words to describe him to you, so you can try to get your arms around it. So I tried to use the word um, uh, exceedingly. And, and somehow exceedingly didn't seem big enough. Uh, let me go back again. Uh, exceedingly uh, uh, and abundantly. But, but even that wasn't big enough. 
So he's exceedingly, he's, he's abundantly, and oh, he's, he's above all. I imagine the writer just gave up on trying to find words to describe God. I can't find the word. He's exceedingly abundantly above all. But check this out. Above all that you may ask or think. God said, whatever you come up in your mind about me, whatever concept you come up with, whatever thought you come up with, I'm bigger than that. Whatever your vast imagination can come up with concerning who I am, God said, I exceed that. That when you come to the limits of your imagination, going as far as your mind could go, God said, I'm past that. <laughs> That, that, that when you think about how much health and wealth you may have, God said, I'm beyond that. That, that, that God's glory is so great, we're going to have to have glorified bodies because we can't contain. <laughs> we're not going to be able to handle the glory of God. That's why he's got to change our bodies when we die and give us a, a, a resurrected body because we can't even handle So God said, I want to talk to your mind. I want to talk to your head. When I start talking about what, about, what you, about, about what you ask or think, whenever you are dealing with a God who is limitless, you have to deal with him in a different way. You have to approach him a different I'm not limited. And whenever you're dealing with somebody who has unlimited resources, you have to approach it differently. Because, for example, if, if, if God says, I'm going to drop a deluge on you, I'm going to drop rain on you, and it's going to flood, why are you out there with a cup? I'm dropping this much on you, and all you got is a cup. That's all you want? That's all the glory you want? It's raining in this house. It, the spirit is falling in this house, and all you want is a cup? How many people want overflow? God said, what I'm about to send into your life is going to exceed. <laughs> it's going to be past what you think. I don't want you dealing with a limitless God with a limited attitude. Oh, I told you I was going to be teaching you preaching. So. <laughs> so, so I want to talk to you about three things. Three things, and I'm going to get out of your way. I got a few minutes to talk about this. Okay, number one, I want to talk to you about if you're going to deal with this kind of God who operates on this level, you're going to have to start asking on another level. You're going to start asking on another level. And I hate to use this crude illustration, but it's the best one I can come up with right now. It would be like having a billionaire friend, and he comes to you and asks you, ask me for whatever you want. Blank check. Whatever you want. And you come in and say, I just need $5. And he's looking at you like, <laughs> I got billions with a B. And the only thing you can come up with is $5? Sometimes when God is talking to us about what we need, we approach him as if he has limitations. I don't want to ask you for too much because it might bankrupt you, God. So I'm just going to ask for a piece. Because I know your funds are limited. I know finances are really challenged for you, God. So I'm not going to ask for too much. It might be too big for you. And God says, you're not asking on the right level. <laughs> you got to broaden your ask. Think about this. It's a compliment to you if I ask you for anything. Because what I'm saying is I believe that you have it. If I ask you for something, it's because I perceive that you have it. If I didn't think you had what I need, I wouldn't ask you for the thing. <laughs> but the fact that I approached you about it at all is because I perceive you have what I need. When we ask God for things in prayer, the Bible said this, ask and you shall receive. The idea is this, God says, I have it, I just want you to have enough faith to, 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 to ask it from me. It's a compliment to God when we go to him in prayer because you're saying, God, I believe you're able. I believe you're able to heal. 
I believe you're able to deliver. I believe you're able to make a way. If I didn't think you was able, I wouldn't ask you. So every time we walk past him and don't ask him, God is insulted. Because you don't think I can do it. You don't think I have it. That if you ask God for anything, it's a compliment to him. Because every time you ask him, he said, not only can I do it, I can exceed what you asked for. You're not happy about this. You're not happy about this yet. When we ask God, we acknowledge him as the God who is able. And it doesn't matter if you're a believer or unbeliever. If you ask God in faith, it motivates him. It it inspires him. It makes him want to do more. When you ask God for something, it makes him want to flex his muscles. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to show himself strong. God says, I'm looking for an opportunity to show off. Come on, husbands, where you at in here? If if you really want your, (laughs) if you really want to make your man show off, start complimenting him. Start talking about, you're the strongest man I ever met. Ain't nobody as strong as you. My God, he'll try to pick up the whole refrigerator by himself. (laughs) I I need a chance to show off. God says sometimes I allow things to go crazy in your life because I need an opportunity to show off. I let things get as bad as they could so that when I show up, I can show you how bad I am. (laughs) As long as you had plenty of money, you couldn't realize how bad I am. As long as you had all the support you needed, you didn't need me. As long as you had all the friends you needed, you didn't call me. But when things got low and you couldn't figure out what you were going to do and you couldn't balance the budget and you couldn't figure out where he was going to pay your rent and you couldn't figure out how he was going to come out of the situation, God said, now you're a candidate for my glory. Where are my candidates in here right now? How many got, people got something, got something right now that this is a job for God? Remember how in the, in the Superman magazines, they were running into certain situations and they would say, this is a job for Superman. That there were some things that were beyond our ability. You have to know that God steps in and says, this is a job for God. That there are just some things that can't no man fix for you, no woman can fix for you, no church can fix for you, no, oh my God, this is a job for God. Somebody lift your hand and say, this is a job. (laughs) Number two, I want you to move from asking on another level to expecting on another level. It's not just asking, it's about expecting. This is what I found out. In life, you don't get what you deserve. You get what you expect. That some people, your expectations are just too low. You forget about asking. You don't even expect it to happen. Yeah, expectation says, I'm not just going to wait and see what happens. I'm going to stand here until it happens. That some people, when it comes to God, we say, okay, God, you, I, I'm, I'm going to put you on a two-day schedule. You got 48 hours to make this happen. And if you don't fix this marriage in 48 hours, I'm out. <laughs> You've been messing that up for 20 years. Now God got to fix it in 48 hours. He got him on a clock. Yeah. And if you don't fix it in 48 hours, I'm out. But faith says... I'm going to stand here until you do it. I'm I'm expecting you. I'm like the old woman waiting at the bus stop. It's 715. And I know that about this time, my bus is coming. So I'm not out here for my health. I know in a minute, it looks crazy. The weather is contrary. People are buzzing by me. But I'm waiting because God already told me it was going to happen. You're not expecting it. I'm expecting God to turn this situation around. And so while I'm waiting, I'm going to be praising him. 
See, I'm so radical that I believe his word so much that I'm just going to stand here and praise him while I wait. How many people have adopted the idea I'm going to praise him while I wait? You don't get what you deserve. Truth be told, you deserve hell. Come on. If God were to reward us according to our works, none of us would be able to stand. So it's not about deserving. You don't deserve to be blessed. You don't deserve to get up. You don't deserve to have the house you have. You don't deserve to have the life you have. It's that God has promised you. <laughs> and I'm waiting on his promise with great expectation. See, I know, I know, because in my church, I like to praise God. And, and, and when I come here, I like to have a shout and all that. But my, my, my bent is this, that I have to give him praise while I'm waiting for him to do what he promised. I don't wait for him to do it and then praise him. I praise him in anticipation of what he's going to do. So here's what I've learned to do. I learned to praise him now and let him do it later. And I'm so radical that, that I don't even wait till he does it. I praise him now as if I already got it. I got five claps, six claps. <laughs> you know how we are in church. We have a praise that we give him when he does it, right? You know, he gave you a new boo, a new house, a new car, <laughs> a new job. We jumping all over the church. We can't even go on with the service because you're running around the building. We can't move to the next thing because you didn't got free because you happy because you received. And God said, I want you to praise me like that before I do it. Where my radical people at? Where my radical people at to say, I'm going to praise him now and let him do it later. In fact, this is going to be a preview. This is how I'm going to, oh, I wish I had about 10 or 20 people. This is how I'm going to praise him when he gives me my breakthrough. This is how I'm going to praise him when he opens the door. I'm just going to give you a demonstration, a commercial, a preview. This is how I'm going to praise him when I come out of my circumstances. This is how I'm going to praise him when we get through this corona crisis. This is how I'm going to praise him when I get my new job. This is how I'm going to praise This is a preview of coming attractions. Open your mouth and give God a praise like you already got it. Oh, I dare you to praise him online like I already got it. This is how you praise him. Okay, I'm sorry. This is not Friday night. This is Wednesday. Last thing, and I'm done. I want you to start receiving on another level. That's number three. What I mean by that is that you have to prepare your life for enlargement. That if God has promised you something, you have to be so radical that you start getting your life prepared for it. To receive what you are expecting. I should be able to see what you're working on and know what you're believing God for. Faith without works is dead. If you're believing God to send you a huge blessing and you come out here and you build an outhouse, I don't believe you. If you believe in God to take you to a whole nother level, I should see you bringing in equipment. When they get ready to build skyscrapers, they got skyscrapers, they got a, 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 all kind of equipment all over Nashville right now where they're building great big uh, skyscrapers, great big buildings. And they have these huge cranes in the sky. And you can tell that's going to be a big building. It's going to be at least 20, 30 feet high, right? If they were trying to build a little outhouse, they wouldn't need no crane to build an outhouse. You bring in the big equipment when you're expecting something big to happen. I just better see what you're working on and tell what you're believing God for. I just, oh my God. Let me give you some scripture. Isaiah 54 and 2. He says, enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch out your tent. Stretch your curtains wide. Don't hold back. Lengthen your cords. All those words, enlarge, stretch, lengthen, that speaks to effort. 
that means you got to be doing something. That means if you're believing God to send somebody into your life, you should be getting your life ready for a spouse. Oh, my God. You ain't going to meet no spouse when you got three, four people lined up in line waiting to come see you. Come on. I'm sorry, Pastor. I'm a... If you believe in God to change your finances, you need to be organizing your finances right now. I'm believing God's going to make me a homeowner. So I'm going to get my credit together. I'm going to get my savings together. I'm going to get my money together. I'm going to hold back on some stuff. I'm going to save some stuff. I'm going to eat at home more. Don't tell me you believe in God for a great ministry and you don't study. Where's your Bible at? Are you going to ministry school? Are you getting prepared? I should be able to see what you're working on now and know what you're believing God for. In fact, you ain't even got to tell me. You got to show me. I don't believe what people say. I learned a long time ago not to pay attention to what people say. I watch what you do. <laughs> I should be able to see what you're working on and know what you're believing God for. I see you. I see you getting ready for a change in your life. You know how? Because it used to be at 6 o'clock in the morning, you'd be on the internet with foolishness, but now you're on your knees or in your Bible or seeking God's face. Now I see you in church, either online or in person, because you're believing God. I believe that we're going to come out of this corona situation. So I'm already getting my life ready. I'm getting my church ready for the harvest. While other folks are saying it's over, it's done, it's a wrap, I'm believing God that God's going to give us increase. How many believe in God for increase? I said, how many people believe in God for increase? I'm getting myself in position because I'm believing God for increase. I'm not going to always be here. I'm not going to always be down. I'm not going to always be lonely. I'm not going to always be depressed. I'm believing God for increase. Somebody yell, increase. Increase in my family, increase in my wisdom, increase in my knowledge, increase in my ability to work. I believe in God for increase. Let me say this last thing, and I'm going to close with this. When, when I was uh, a little boy around Thanksgiving time, our family used to always have family get-togethers at my grandmother's house, and we would all be gathered at her house. But in my grandmother's house, Pastor Marco, we had two tables. We had the table where the adults sat, right? And then we had what they called the kids' table. Y- y'all had that too? At the adults' table, they'd be talking about adult stuff, grown folk stuff, politics, relationships, money, important stuff. At the kids' table, We'd be talking about cartoons and what happened at school today and something really silly. And, 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 and even as a kid, Pastor Marco, I'd be sitting at the kids' table, but I'd be wishing I could be at the grown folks' table because they were talking about some real important stuff. Paul said this. He said, when I was a child, I spake as a child and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I left the kids' table and went to the big people's table. God is saying to somebody, I'm about to move you from the kids' table. (laughs) I'm about to move you from the kids' table. I'm on my way to the big table. You know you're leaving the kids' table when you start having real conversations on another level and you start leaving negative people behind. Negative people, haters, critics, they're at the kids' table. They're immature. You can't handle this conversation. I got to get at the table where people are talking about faith and about God and about getting up and about changing things and about moving things and about making a difference. I'm leaving the kids' table. I come to tell somebody, God said, I'm calling you away from the kids' table. You get ready to leave the kitty table because you're on your way to the big table. At the big table, they're talking about big things. Oh, you don't hear me up in here. How many God is pulling you away from the little table? I'm, I'm, I'm leaving the little God. I'm leaving the little-minded people. 
I'm leaving the small-minded people, all the folks that want to gossip, all the folks that want to complain, all the folks that want to argue, all the folks that want to fuss all the time, all the folks want to be mad. I'm leaving that table, and I'm going to the table where it's spread, where I'm getting faith, and I'm getting power, and I'm getting glory, and I'm getting anointing, and I'm getting vision. You can't get vision sitting around gossiping all the time. You got to get around visionary people. So God sent me all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. Snatch me out of Nashville. I wouldn't even plan to come out here. I don't even know who I'm here for. I don't know if it's in your, if you're in the room or if you're online. Snatch me out of my comfort zone in the middle of us building our great church to say, go drop off this mail to somebody in San Bernardino. And I don't know if you're in here or not. If, if that's you, make some noise. I, I, I thank you for the mail. I, if, if you feel God pulling you away from the kiddie table, I know I'm going to the big folks table because my faith is being built up. My praise is going to another level. My prayer life is going to another level. I'm believing God for greater things. I'm believing God for ridiculous things. I'm believing God for crazy things. I got crazy ideas and I got crazy concepts and I'm getting on people's nerves because I keep talking about stuff that they can't see because I left the small table and I'm going to the big Everybody's going to the big table. Let's get up by faith right now and start walking. I'm leaving that table. I'm leaving that table. I'm going to the big table. I'm going to eat on another level. God said, I'm all. I will say that, God. God said to tell somebody, you're about to eat on another level. At the kiddie table, they give you small portions, just enough to get in your mouth. But God said, I'm going to sit up. I'm going to put a spread before you. I'm going to give you an appetite for bigger things. Oh, my God. I'm going to allow you to devour some bigger. Oh, oh I got to sit down. My time is up. I got to get out of here. Everybody that believes that God's about to give you a bigger appetite, you're going to eat on another level. You're going to manage finances on another level. You're going to manage ministry on another level. You're going to manage opportunities on another level. Everybody that's glad that God sent you to another level, open your mouth and give it praise right here. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. They mad at me, but I'm going. They don't like me, but I'm going. They talking about me, but I'm going. Lift your hands right here. Lift your hands right here. Lift your hands right here. Somebody's, somebody's get ready to eat on another level. You're moving away from pablum, from the milk of the word to the meat of the word. You're moving away from having to call your prayer partner all the time and be able to get a prayer through for yourself. You're moving away from the victim chair and becoming a victor. You're moving away from somebody who needs help to somebody who gives help. And you'll know you're going to the big table when you show up at church saying, what can I do versus what can I get? You know you're going to the big table when you start thinking about how can I help somebody rather than always saying, I need somebody to help me. I'm graduating. Lift your hands right here. God said, you're going to the big table. You're going to eat on another level. Your, your worship should be going up right now. Your, your, your walk with God should be going up right now. Some people during this quarantine time and during this time of, of, of corona, they have fallen off, going into other things. But really, this is a time that God wants you to get closer. Press in. Go deeper. I'll be glad when we get back to church as usual, but while we're waiting for that, your worship should be getting deeper. My God, when these doors open, it should be like an explosion, like a bomb hit this place. Why? Because I've been spending time with Jesus. Come on. All you've been doing for eight weeks is watching Netflix, binge watching Hulu. How much time are you spending in God's presence? Oh, God, feed me on another level. I'm getting more revelation. I'm getting more of a touch. I'm getting deeper in him because I'm expecting God 
to receive on another level. Father, I'm praying for everybody in this room and everybody that's watching me. For whoever this was for, I'm praying that they have the capacity to receive what I'm saying. Without theatrics, without drama, without going into gyrations, without going into a spectoranium, just receiving the pure truth of your word. Help us to think on another level. Whatever stinking thinking I had, Lord, help me throw it out and help me receive what you have for me. Lord, I'm sorry. I've been thinking too small. I've been thinking way too small. I was trying to bring you down to something I could manage instead of growing up and expanding my mind. But I, but I release right now. I release myself from everything that held me back, everything that held me down, and I receive your glory now in Jesus' name. If you receive God's glory, receive it right here. Give him praise right here. Give him praise right here. Give him praise right here. Somebody that's watching me online, you, you, you've been in a situation where God's been proving himself to you over and over. And you think that just because you've been around church people that you've seen all that God is. You think that you've been around church and you're not impressed anymore. I've, I've been there and done that, got a t-shirt. God said, you haven't begun to scratch the surface of who I am. I'm going to shock you with how much I'll do in your life. If you give me a chance to really be in your life, I don't mean just playing with me. I don't mean just hanging around you. I mean really put your whole self in. I will do things in your life that will shock you. I have no limits. There is no addiction strong enough to hold me. There is no drug that is strong enough to stop me. And you say, I got too many issues. God said, I'm not intimidated by your issues. I'll break every chain. I'll break every fetter. I'm a fighter who's never lost. Oh my God. There's no devil, no demon, no cause, no generational curse that is strong enough to stop what I want to do in your life. I break the curse right now. I break it right now. In the name of Jesus, I break the addiction. I break the generational curse right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By the power of God, it's breaking off of you right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now. For every person in this room, I'm praying that the power of God fall you in a mighty way. In Jesus' name. Look, look, that's my time. I gotta go. I'm glad that you're here. I hope you received the mail. If you received it, give God praise right here. Yes, you're, at home. you're at home right now. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. Take it outside your box. We're gonna ask at another level. We're gonna expect at another level. And we're going to receive at another level. If you're watching right now, we're going to end with this. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. This is your opportunity. You're at a watch party right now. Maybe you're driving your vehicle. You're at work. This is your day to give your life to Jesus. Here's the most important question anybody could ever ask you. If you were to die today, where are you going to spend eternity? There's a heaven and there's a hell. Well, pastor, who goes to heaven? All those who have the son have eternal life. All those who do not have the son, do not have Jesus, do not have eternal life. So wherever you're at, bow your head and close your eyes. You're at home right now. You're at a watch party. You're at work. You say this prayer. You're going to be saved right now. Jesus is going to come inside of you. He's going to forgive you of all your sins. Every head bow, every eyes close. If you want to be forgiven of your sins, you want to give your life to Jesus, you want eternal life, you want to make sure if you die today that you'd go straight to heaven, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, I ask forgiveness of all my sins. Jesus, come into my heart and become my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross and forgiving me of all my sins. Today I am saved. 
I am born again. I'm on my way to heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you just said that prayer, you are saved. Your next step is now is to go to igotsaved.com. It should be popping up maybe on your screen right now. I got saved. Dot com. We're going to help you with your walk with Christ. We love you guys this Friday night, Fire Friday. Pastor Derek Faison here on Friday. Outdoors, you don't want to miss it. This Friday at 7 o'clock, invite some friends, invite some family. We got in and out coming out that night. We have Kona Ice coming. But most importantly, the presence of God. Fire Friday, don't miss it. This Friday, 7 o'clock with Pastor Derek Faison. God bless you guys. Have a great day couple days. We'll see you on Friday. God bless you guys. Hello, everyone. What a powerful message. And on behalf of the Wayward Outreach, we just want to say we love you. But most importantly, God loves you. And if that word spoke to you today, make sure you help us get this message out by liking, commenting, and sharing this YouTube channel. God bless you all. See you next time.